Today, I have the pleasure of doing an interview with both Marty Weems and Chris Gibbs. Chris, how are you today? Doing very well, thanks, Trace. And how's things with you? I'm going to direct this first question to you. Question to you because we've had a lot of news in the market this week in the rare sector, and this announcement, from my read of it, looks substantial. Headline: Massive U.S. rare earths project is larger than previously expected, and I have to say that's an understated headline. Can you tell us what this means? Now look, you know, Tracy, we're extremely excited about the Hallett Creek project. As you know, we've been, you know, we just completed our maiden drill campaign. And uh, we started out you know, with this uh, project with uh, only a few hundred acres, and we've significantly uh, increased the footprint. It's now over uh, you know, 6,000 acres. And uh, in completing the maiden drill campaign, you know, we, uh, you know, we came out with a, a significant upgrade to the exploration target. So uh, you know, yeah, it's 328% yeah, more than the previous exploration target. And uh, it's a whopping uh, around 1.1 billion you know, ton of uh, you know, mineralized you know, rock at this actual uh, deposit. So uh, we're extremely excited to uh, announce this. But what's uh, you know, what, what's really going to be the the truth here is when we get the drills on the ground and do the uh, the resource drill campaign and come out with a significant jork resource. And that's that's our primary focus. And we're excited to. Uh, get that happening in the imminent future. All right, so the number I heard you say was 1.1 billion. I've got here the updated exploration targets outlined between 1.01 and 1.27 billion tons of rare earth mineralized rocks. That's correct. Okay, so I think everybody out there may be going, American rare who? <laughs> A billion <laughs> what? Okay. Chris, I think there's been some confusion because there were two company names associated with American Rare Earths, but you do have this resource is in the United States. Is that correct? That, that is correct. And sitting alongside me is uh, Marty Weems, and uh, Marty is the uh, the head and the yeah, president of our uh, North American business, and that that business, the subsidiary of that, yeah, is yeah, Western yeah, Rare Earths, and yeah, Western Rare Earths is is part of American Rare Earths. We're, we're the one company. Um, and uh, it's, yeah, as I said, it's a subsidiary that we, we set up here. Um, Marty's the, the head of this business and the president of, uh, of the North American region. And uh, no, look, uh, yeah, again, it's, uh, yeah, it, it's a great business we've got here. Um, we've got this team on the ground with Marty and uh, our exploration team here. Our properties are all US based. And we've been transitioning to being a, a fully fledged yeah, American company. Um, early, you know, since I've come on board, um, we've uh, you know, brought on three you know, US-based directors as part of American Rare Earths. And one of those directors has been on your program a few times, and Mel Sanderson. Um, and we've also listed on the you know, US OTC you know, QB. And uh, our long-term projection here is to uh, be you know, fully listed yeah, in yeah, yeah, continue to yeah, upgrade our listings here in the U.S. And so uh, yeah, we're yeah, we're we're in transition as a company, and really the Hallett Creek project you know, for me is a uh, company maker. It's a uh, significant project, um, has huge potential to uh, yeah be a world class asset. And those numbers, yeah, Tracy, in terms of the exploration target, yeah, as you said, yeah, that's massive. Yeah, there's not very many you know, you know, rare earth deposits in the world that have this amount of uh, you know, potential resources. And so we're, we're very excited to uh, move this project forward you know, under the leadership of uh, Marty here, who heads up our you know, business here in the US. Okay, so let me just back you up. Let me confirm, Marty, of course, the Hallett Creek is in Wyoming, correct? The United States? Yeah, that's correct. So our, our two flagship projects are, are Hallett Creek in Wyoming, and then also the La Paz project in Arizona. And before I get to your exciting relationship with the DOE, um, I would like to just back you up, Chris, and say, aren't you Australian or, you know, are investor intel investors are interested? Okay, well, well, Tracy, I'm actually, uh, yeah, I, I am Australian, was born in Australia, but I'm also a Canadian citizen. Um, I've spent uh, yeah, a number of years over here in North America, yeah, living both in, uh, yeah, in Canada, but I've also uh, spent significant time 
you're running a uh, titanium dioxide facility in Baltimore, Maryland. Um, also a uh, molybdenum refinery in Pittsburgh and also a part of a corporate leadership team for a metals company based out of Denver. So I've got significant experience here uh, in, in North America and I've also been part of building mines yeah, in Canada. So uh, yeah, I, yeah, sometimes I'm, I'm not sure where home is, <laughs> okay? And t today you're talking to me uh, here alongside Marty in the, in the US and yeah, I, I spend significant time yeah, coming over here. But again, yeah, Marty's the, the head of our business here and again, we're just super excited with what Hallett Creek yep, has, uh, yep, well, what it will I, potentially deliver for us. Of course, I purposely brought that up because you wouldn't believe the chat boards. You know, the Australians are taking over. And of course, now they're going to be doubly confused. We've got an American here in management and we have a Canadian Australian. This should definitely give our audience something to consider uh, when they like to uh, file people under a certain uh, uh, geographical territory. Okay, so just backing up here, who would like to give all of those out there going, okay, obviously this management team knows what they're doing, they're American, uh, thus they achieve a lot of the sustainability uh, criteria that we're looking for, but you also have gone places other companies in the sector have not gone, and let's talk about your relationship with the DOE. Yeah, and, and look, that's probably best handled by Marty, who has taken the lead on that, Marty. So uh, I'll let you handle that one. Yeah, thank you, Chris. And, and Tracy, good to see you again. Yeah, you know, we're very excited by, you know, the, the kind of what we consider the three pillars of our company, which are these great mineral assets, the team we're building, uh, and then these partnerships uh, like DOE, as you mentioned. So, um, you know, DOE, uh, through a couple of departments, uh, be it their, uh, the Critical Materials Institute, which is a DOE innovation hub, as well as through uh, EERE um, and its advanced manufacturing office. There's, so there's been funding mechanisms that have, uh, you know, activated a couple of our R&D partnerships for them to do very specific cutting edge, we think disruptive uh, potential new processing technology and, be, and that being focused on our feedstock. Um, you know, they, uh, the, the research community has a real keen interest in our feedstock because of the low thorium content and the possibility that uh, we can uh, create a flow sheet and a, and a process uh, that ultimately uh, potentially does not pierce the veil of needing an NRC permit. You know, so if we can keep that thorium content, uranium th content combined under 500 parts per million, then handling requirements become much easier. Uh, and when you're dealing with, uh, especially now, these uh, bio-based approaches, uh, such as a bio-leaching type approach, you know, uh, the, the, the bugs and such uh, prefer an environment that's not extraordinarily irradiated. So uh, that, that works out a little better. So uh, we like where these are going. We've got a number of these relationships and, and are cultivating more because um, there's just there's hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars being uh, poured into uh, changing the technology of this supply chain and making it greener, cleaner, more sustainable. Um, that funding's coming from DOE as well as the uh, Department of Defense programs like the DARPA Ember program, which we're also a part of there. Um, and you know, so for us to take greatest advantage of as many um, funding opportunities as possible, these partnerships are, are critical, and it's primarily going to be through DOE and DOD funded mechanisms. Of course, I'd like to encourage all of you out there who may be new to American wearers to start by reading this news release. It's actually very good. Gentlemen, I would like to congratulate you. You identify, identify clearly the target, the industry sector. You mentioned things like uh, you've increased your land holding to over 6,000 acres plus in this uh, Hallett Creek project area. Is that correct? Yeah, that, that is correct, Tracy. And we are yeah, continuing to look at expanding that. And so, uh, yeah, again, we're, we're super excited with this project. And, and look, we can't wait to get drills on the ground and really establish a, a significant you know, dual resource yeah, at this uh, deposit and continue to move it forward. And uh, yeah, again, the, you know, what, what makes this project unique is that uh, it, it is low in thorium and those uh, you know, uranium, those penalty elements, and uh, it is you know, still open at depth. It's open lateral, laterally. 
And uh, so we, uh, yeah, we're, we're very excited to get these drills on the ground yeah, first fold and to establish a significant chalk resource in the early part of next year and then continue to uh, move this project forward. And so, uh, and in conjunction whilst doing that, um, this great work that Marty's doing on that technology front. And uh, yeah, because again, our strategy here is to be moving forward you know, the, uh, these respective two projects that we've got and uh, while at the same time getting involved in this technology and being at the leading edge and then essentially you know, close that gap so that we can then really go from you know, mind to market and uh, the intent is to uh, you know, be in the driver's seat for any of this transformational technology that could well come through um, but I do wish to point out that we're also you know, conducting metallurgical test work where you know, the uh, your conventional technologies is also uh, you're working. We're, we're not dependent on this new technology. The conventional technologies for processing rare earths is uh, still very relevant you know, to this deposit, um, but we are wanting to be part of the, uh, the new, what I call green revolution to actually you know, be at that leading edge to process, refine and purify rare earths in a green and sustainable manner. And that's why we're really focused on these major rare earth deposits that are you know, first off low in those penalty elements. Well, you must be doing something correct. And I'll avoid asking the obvious question, which is why have you flown all the way from Australia to Phoenix to have meetings in Phoenix, <laughs> Chris? But I hope you too will join us more often and more frequently because you are moving incredibly fast. I'd like to thank you both for joining us. That is Chris Gibbs and Marty Weems from American Rare Thank you. Thank you, Tracy. Hey, thank you, Tracy.